How you doing? Great. Um, I thought that we could just start. If you, could you just introduce your little buddy in your hand? Yeah, this is the newest robot that we've been working on. It's called Stanford Pupper. Uh, it's a low-cost open source quadruped that we hope lowers the barrier to entry to robotics. I can't help but notice that you put googly eyes on the front of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that to humanize it? Or does that, do those have a, like a function? Uh, I'm very joking. functional in making it more cute. <laughs> making it more cute so that nobody treats it badly. Exactly. OK. Um, can we show them? Absolutely. What you did here? Uh, it's, a cute, it's a cute guy. Can you guys see? So Stanford Pupper is uh, 12 degrees of freedom. Um, so that means they can go forward, backwards, side to side, and turning in place and can do kind of cute sitting and orienting like that. We call that the rock the hip, right? Oh, yeah. This one is the real rocking the hip. <laughs> Show them the sneak walk. Oh, the sneaky mode? All right. It's like you never even knew it was coming, right? And how about a jump, Nathan? Can we do one of those? Oh, yeah. Oh, my god. <laughs> I mean, round of applause, right? <laughs> Very good. Um, can you tell pe people, like, I, I don't immediately see in a commercial application, although I'm sure the people in this room are like, I need to go acquire Nathan and sell <laughs> this dog robot. But what is the, wh why are you guys doing this in the first place? Is this an academic venture? Yeah, so our, we're a student robotics team at Stanford, uh, so we were originally not associated with any lab. Um, and we were just inspired by quadrupeds and other legged robots that we were seeing out there, um, like Boston Dynamics, some from the COD lab from University of Pennsylvania. Um, but we, we really just wanted to play and have one in our own hands, and we didn't have a way to do that. They were very expensive. Um, so we started out just like, how can we make one on our own budget? And so that led to using inexpensive parts while finding the most powerful motors, powerful actuators, and doing the software ourselves. So, for this robot, um, it's a continuation of our original robot, Stanford Doggo. And we're just trying to make it as accessible as possible to people who are interested in robotics. A lot of people are interested in Stanford Doggo, but you know it's kind of difficult to build. It costs $3,000. So this one uh, costs $600 and is quite easy to build. Um, you can build it in about 8 to 10 hours. And so it's our uh, most inexpensive, most accessible robot yet. And is there a place where people in this room maybe could go and find out how to build their own doggo? Have you, have you uh, open sourced it? Absolutely, absolutely. I was uh, hard at work last night getting the website ready. It's stanfordstudentrobotics.org slash robots. And if you want to build any of our robots, you can check out that website. That's very generous of you. Do you have more robots to show us? You want to bring some out or we no? We have five more robots to show. Uh, so Aaron over here, uh, co-lead of the robotics group, uh, we'll show our original robot, Stanford Doggo. And <laughs> yeah, so this is our original robot, uh, Doggo. We presented him last year at ICRA in Montreal. Um, Doggo holds the record for highest jumping quadruped at over a meter. Uh, we do that under laboratory settings. But um, he also holds the record of all robots for uh, highest specific vertical agility. Um, which is sort of how high you can get, how fast. Um, yeah. Can we do like a medium high jump? Yeah, I know you won't go a full meter, but like, can we push the <laughs> limits? This is the highest we're hopping right now, but I do have another trick I can show you. So that was a firm no then? That, that was a no, but okay. I got something else. I'm not used to no's, but go ahead. What's the next <laughs> trick? Oh, shit. We can do a back handspring. That's cool. Let's, I mean, Ooh. <laughs> needed a little help there. He's getting tired. Yeah. Um, what was it like as you guys are building these? Obviously, you're you're very experienced and seasoned roboticists. Um, what what was like the biggest challenge? Right? Did you guys like run into? I know you were working really hard to make it low cost and affordable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that gave you some 
big decisions in terms of do we want X or Y? Like, what was the big challenge or the big? I think uh, in all of robotics, but what really like stood out to me while doing this is just the sheer number of iterations it takes to get anything to work the way you want it to. Um, I mean, it took us nearly a year and a half to get our first robot, Doggo, really working um, to a point where we could show it off. And then even then, we weren't content with where it was at and wanted to keep uh, working to improve things and uh, you know, slowly did that through a bunch of iterations. I also want to ask, like, you guys are clearly the future of the <laughs> field. Um, you know, when, it, when you're talking about, I made a little joke about the googly eyes, but like in reality, when you're kind of balancing, do you give it human or at least familiar organic features, like aesthetically, and do you have to decide between the two? Do you guys have a stance really on whether robots should look and feel like something that's familiar, or should they be more like of the Roomba persuasion, <laughs> where it's just a robot, it doesn't need to look like anything but a robot? Right. Well, we specifically avoided trying to make them look just like dogs. I think when you're on the uncanny valley, that would be a little bit weird. But other than that, we've been focusing on the feel, like you were saying. Does it feel like something that could be alive? Um, and from there, that kind of builds a sense of attachment. Um, and so I think just walking smoothly, being able to like look around at you. Um, googly ties are just something. Googly eyes are just something we added last minute. But the feel is what we've been focusing on. And I think from there, the anthropomorphic aesthetic comes out of it. Can I? Drive the Doge? Absolutely. OK, I'm going to hand this to you. They're top secret, <laughs> so. And if you want to just tell people stuff about the robot while I play. Yeah, well, I think now could be a good time to bring out our four other robots. Yeah, How about that? Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> Look at them. <all. laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So we have three more puppers coming out. Uh, like I said, they're low cost, and so you're like, why not? We can make uh, five in total. Um, this larger robot here is for research. It has torque controllable actuators, a very agile robot. Um, we think it can jump about two meters high, but we haven't tested that one out yet. Um, and this one is for research, uh, especially in our lab, where we're working on different types of trajectory optimization to really use um, new powerful um, embedded computers to get the most out of these robots. And uh, on, the, on your guys' right, we have what we call Smart Pupper. Uh, so it includes an NVIDIA Jetson and then some cam depth cameras. And so for instance, right now, we have it running on obstacle avoidance, where if it gets too close to any one object, uh, you can kind of like feel it, and it'll stop going towards that. Um, I have one final question for both of you. Um, well, actually, I have a question for the audience. Who would be interested in hiring these guys? <laughs> a few of you, yeah, for sure. What do you guys want to do, actually? You're both so, so young. Like, what do you, you want to do with your lives, and what are you looking to go accomplish? <laughs> and, not in a mean lives. way, but like, we, obviously, we've got some talent here. Like, what, what are you looking for? I, I mean, I, I'm enjoying the journey right now, and. Uh, I'm still excited to see where it will take me. I'm lucky enough to still have at least one more year of school. And um, we've actually started working with one of the professors on campus to really bring cutting edge controls to uh, this robot in particular. And uh, that's got me interested in research. And so I may be uh, looking to get into that field and, and more immediately a master's or PhD. Cool. And Nathan, what's next for you? Yeah, so I'm a senior at Stanford, but sticking around for another year. Uh, doing a master's program. But after that, I'm not quite sure. Uh, graduate program, perhaps, like Aaron. But really, I'm interested in industry and perhaps bridging robotics and education and allowing kids, K-12 undergraduates, to get their hands as soon as possible on interesting robots. Round of applause for these guys, right? <laughs> awesome job. Thank you so much. You guys you. can <laughs> find a way to get your robots off stage. I won't step on any of them. They're the cutest little things. It's just like little bugs running around.